Good evening, welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Church as we celebrate the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our scripture text for the Mass this evening can be found beginning on page 62 of your Breaking Bread that's in front of you. And I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing our gathering hymn here at this table, hymn number 312, 312.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather together this evening to give God our thanks and our praise in this celebration of the Mass, let us pause a few moments, mindful of the presence of Christ among us, and together let us acknowledge our sins, seeking God's mercy to prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus once again in these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to give us new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your light shines bright in the world. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring peace and hope to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. 
As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit, the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Spirit and mind. 
hearts to your word. God has called us through the gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone jars of water there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first. And then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Canaan Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Many years ago, um, I read a book by Sarah von Bronick entitled Simple Abundance. It was on the bestseller list. Her target audience was women who found themselves overwhelmed and dried out by the unending commitments to family, to career, and community with not enough time or contentment for themselves. And her theme is one of appreciating and enjoying the abundance that is already present in life. This book came out of her own personal experience of life. She came to realize that she was moving through life uh, frazzled, she was depressed, she found herself getting resentful and angry at what was missing in her life, though she could not exactly say what was missing. And her unfulfilled needs led her to make practical rearrangements in her life. So she began to take stock of the positives. She gave up focusing on the negatives. She made changes in her life, and she found that she had enough. She had enough money, she had enough time, enough love and privacy. In fact, she had an abundance, a simple abundance of what she needed. She did not need more. She needed to appreciate more of what she already had. It wasn't that she had no wine, She had not even noticed how good the water tasted. Although the book's target audience was women, uh, men could learn a lot from the book as well as I did. So today's gospel is about need and abundance. 
about running out, being short, about ordinary water turned into extraordinary wine. You know, it's about abundance. What happened? They had the six big old um, containers <clears throat> for ceremonial purification. They were empty. Jesus said, fill them up with water to the brim. Then go take it to the head waiter. And of course, it was the best wine of the evening. But again, that exemplifies what life is to be about when we live in God. Our lives are changed. Our lives are transformed. Think about, thinking about the notions of need and abundance can lead us into the meaning of the sign that Jesus gives us in today's gospel, his first miracle, the changing of the water into wine. Advertisers and marketing experts often try to trick us into longing for more saying we need more than what we already have. It's kind of the American way. We need a bigger house. We need a better car. We need better clothing, hair, and toys, and the list goes on. They try to teach us to want more. But in our wiser moments, we recognize what we already have. And we have a lot of good in our lives. How abundant our life truly is. Sometimes it may feel like we do not have enough time. But time is, abund is abundant enough if we learn what is important in life. You want to let society rule your life, you can just run crazy all the time. We have to make choices. How we spend our time. We never seem to have enough money. But for most of us, money is abundant enough if we learn what's important in life. When we put God at the center of our lives, it's amazing how priorities can fall into place. Sometimes in life we have experiences when life does not seem abundant. We may be struggling with our children. We may have felt the betrayal of a friend. We may experience illness. We may have had an accident. The death of someone we love. Or we have had an experience of being treated unjustly or unfairly. And those experiences can seemingly suck the life right out of us. Sometimes we seemingly run out of wine. And not only then we run out of wine, sometimes the water tastes bitter. But today's scriptures speak to those moments. Scripture reaffirms for each one of us that even in those moments of emptiness and need, God is near. You know, in the first reading... This is a celebration of the new Jerusalem, the heavenly banquet. The people of Israel had returned to Jerusalem, but it was not rebuilt. It was in ruins. And they were in poverty. They were in want. And the promise of God seemed so delayed to them that it felt broken. But Isaiah kept telling his people, although Jerusalem seemed forsaken and desolate, continue to keep faith in the promise of God, in the care of God. And they did. In our own lives, there are many signs of the abundance of God's love and care. But often we fail to see them. We might be looking for more, and we miss the gift that we have. Sometimes we fail to see them because simply we don't take the time to look. There's a lot of wisdom in that old adage, count your blessings. If you take the time to count your blessings every day, it'll change your life. 
you'll look at life differently. However, we also experience pain, grief, betrayal, sorrow, loss, confusion, helplessness, and hurt. Even in those moments, God is there. We only have to look at the cross to realize and know that our God is with us. When we, as a Catholic community, as disciples of the Lord, reach out to offer help and comfort to others who are struggling, the water of human concern can become the wine of God's presence. Our God is among us in a multitude of ways. And one of the ways that we personally encounter him is in the gift of the Eucharist. What you're doing this evening. And what a gift it is that we as a community of faith can gather together as a community of believers, as a community of disciples, gather around God's word, God's table, to be nourished and strengthened, to become the body and blood of Christ, broken and poured out for others. It's a gift we often take for granted, right? Let's go through the motions. But don't take it for granted. It's an incredible gift. Because through it, we are continually nourished and strengthened and transformed to become the people God wants us to be. And that brings us peace. That brings us joy. Jesus is here. He is among us. Our God is among us. The question is, are we open to God's presence? Do we recognize and see the gift we have? And do we see the gift that we are called to be for others? Together as God's people, let us now stand as we profess our common faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Just as Mary put her trust in her Son, telling the servers to do whatever Jesus says, we also bring our needs to the God who hears and answers our prayer. For the church, inspired by Mary's words, may we grow as disciples by striving to do all that God asks of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, may sincere dialogue among men and women of different faiths produce the fruits of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the suffering from mental, physical, or spiritual illness, may they know the healing compassion of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill and those who care for them, may God bring the sick healing through the loving care of health care workers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered in faith, May we use the gifts we have been given and encourage one another to build up the body of Christ through serving those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, 
May the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and, str and strength, especially Janine Hudibrol, Kristen Voller, Betty Peters, Jean Gr Grinstead, Margaret Helfrich, and Karen Longsother. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, in the wedding feast of e the eternal Jerusalem, may our beloved departed eat forever in the company of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Marcy Pablo and the intentions of the St. Thomas the Apostle Parish family for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, as we assemble to celebrate the Lord's Day, let your holy church experience anew the transforming power of your love and find hope in sharing this joyful foretaste of heaven's eternal wedding feast. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is number 586, We Are Many Parts, number 586. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace of the Lord in His name, for our good and all Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. 
for having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her husband, St. Joseph, with St. Thomas, the Blessed Apostle, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 356, Miracle of Grace, number 356. This is 
Number 362. At this time, I invite the Eucharistic ministers to the shut-in this evening to please come forward. My dear friends, we send you forth to the sick and the homebound of our parish community bearing the word of life and the body of Christ, together with the assurance of our love and concern. We pray that these gifts may strengthen our absent brothers and sisters in their communion with us through this journey of life to the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements. Um, we are having our parish blood dot drive, and it'll start tomorrow, the 16th through the 22nd. So if you can give blood, um, and your blood donations will stay in our area, you can save a life. So thank you for supporting our blood drive sponsored by the Knights of Columbus. Um, our book study, which will be Return, How to Draw Your Child Back to the Church, that begins January 20th at 7 p.m., and it'll be for three weeks in the parish center. So you can check that out if you'd like. Call the um, parish office for more information on that. And in addition, you know, we talked about Couple Talk Live, that five-week series, um, that'll be through Zoom. If you'd like to sign up for that to enhance your marital relationship, that could be a great thing. And also the Worldwide Marriage Encounter will be coming up February 4th through the 6th here in Billings at Mary Queen of Peace. And Bishop Warfell will be one of the presenters. And I believe that's it. Thanks for the gift of your presence. Somebody told me as they were coming in, that if we could speed it up, they'd like to get to the football game, which starts at 6. And it's 10 to 6. We'll be okay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, let us sing number 555. All the ends of the earth, number 555. Five, five.